Thank you. We're here to inject a bit of marine into a very terrestrial um, conference. So first of all, what is Living Seas? Um, so Living Seas is the Wildlife Trust vision for the future of UK seas. Within Living Seas, marine wildlife thrives from the depths of the ocean to coastal shallows. Our seas are currently at a turning point and we believe that Welsh people and communities as well as coastal visitors are key to helping reverse the decline in marine wildlife. As 2018 is Year of the Sea in Wales, it has been the perfect time for us to launch a Wales-wide marine project. And the Living Seas project was launched at the Volvo Ocean Race in June this year and is a collaboration between North Wales Wildlife Trust and the Wildlife Trust of South and West Wales. And we've been funded by Heritage Lottery Fund, Visit Wales and People's Postcode Lottery. This is our lovely Marine, marine Living Seas team. Um, we have two teams, one based uh, in Bangor in North Wales and one based at the Cardigan Bay Marine Wildlife Centre in Newquay. Myself and Bev both from Newquay. I'm the Living Seas Wales Project Officer and Bev is the Engagement Officer on the project. We also have um, two other people in North Wales doing the same job. So um, Dawn Thomas, who's right at the back in the pink there and Eve Grayson on the side. We've also got a lot of help from our other Wildlife Trust colleagues, including our marketing team of uh, Gina Gavigan and Bex. Our manager is uh, Nia Jones, who's currently based in North Wales, as our South Wales manager, Sarah Perry, is currently on maternity leave. And we receive a lot of help from Sarah Castle, who is the CEO of the Wildlife Trust of South and West Wales. So the Living Seas Wells project uses awe-inspiring technology, engaging experiences and learning opportunities to help people to engage with and feel connected to the marine wildlife environment in Wales, thus helping us to achieve Living Seas in Wales. So why now? The next five years are critical to marine and coastal environments in Wales. With new laws and government commitments, including the Welsh National Marine Plan, we have an opportunity for our seas to recover their health. As previously mentioned, year of the, 2018 is Year of the Sea in Wales and is the perfect time for us to launch this project. So why is this project needed? Although 36% of the Welsh coast is designated as marine protected areas, 50% of these are failing in their management. At 15,000 square kilometres, our seas are nearly double the size of Wales, yet very little is known about it due to the practicalities of studying life and habitats beneath the waves. Public engagement with marine heritage has always been problematic as most marine habitats and life are out of sight and therefore out of mind. Blue, the Blue Planet effect was talked about earlier on. Everyone's got really excited about the marine environment in tropical areas. Um, it is absolutely shocking the number of people in Wales that don't realise that we have the largest population of bottlenose dolphins in the UK, in Cardigan Bay. We've got 250 to 300 do bottlenose dolphins there. People think you've got to go to these far-fung places to see these marine animals, and you don't have to. We have them right here in Wales, and that's something that we really need to address. During our development phase research, as anyone who has applied for Heritage Lottery funding know there's about five years of research before you even can get the project started, we found that there is poor baseline knowledge of abundance and distribution of marine species in Wales, a limited awareness of the threats of invasive non-native species, and a huge diversity of opinions relating to changes in the environmental conditions of Wales coasts and seas, but to name a few issues. The Living Seas Wales project aims to address the issues surrounding public engagement and the lack of data by involving volunteers in data collection activities. So there are three main themes in our project. So we have documenting our past, where we hope to collect and capture and disseminate historical information and stories. We've got exploring our present, which is very much where my role comes into play. And we have inspiring our future, so our programme is not going to work if we don't inspire people to take our message forward and take action once our funding ceases. So I'm going to start by talking about exploring our present. So, the living, so engagement, inspiration and education is absolutely paramount to the success of this project. 
And the Living Seas Wales project have been trying to do this in a number of ways. And one of the ways that we're doing this is we have been travelling along the coast of Wales with our Living Seas Wales live roadshow. So we started in Cardiff at the Volvo Ocean Race in June. And we've been travelling along the coast. So we've been to Swansea Waterfront Museum. We've been to Swansea Air Show. We have been to Martins Haven in Pembrokeshire, Fishguard, Aberavon, Kilgarran Wildlife Centre and Newquay. And we handed over to the North Wales team in Aberdovey for them to continue the roadshow in North Wales. So part of the Living Seas Roadshow is showcasing our 7D augmented reality experience. So this is a short interactive wildlife film that showcases some of the wildlife that we have in the West Coast and in Wales. It's narrated by Yolo Williams and it allows people to experience being immersed in wildlife and for many of these people for the first time. We also have our virtual reality headsets where we have actual footage of common dolphins diving and swimming off the Pembrokeshire coast. So this is a 360 degree experience that again allows people to feel like they are there and immersed in nature. As well as all of these things, we had catered lots of different educational events and activities at each site. So we ran beach cleans in conjunction with organisations such as Surface Against Sewage. We also ran strand line surveys, beach combing, rock pooling and lots and lots of different guided walks and talks. And we engaged with over 4,000 people that came to our roadshow just this summer. And of those 4,000 people, over 82% said that their experience had been excellent and over 94% reported that their knowledge of conservation and the Welsh and species living in Wales had increased. So another part of our project is documenting our past and we will be concentrating on this part of the project over the winter. So this involves inviting people to come and share their memories of the Welsh coast and environment and we will be doing this at set events on set dates and we will be recording these interviews, asking people to bring along artefacts, uh, pictures, newspaper articles, whatever it is, and sharing their stories with us. We will then upload these stories onto the People Collection Wales website, which is a website that showcases all Welsh heritage, and we will be linking that to our website. We will also be sharing these stories when we are out and about engaging with people. And it's very, very important that we gather this information so that we can see the changes that have been made along the Welsh coast and what we can do about them. So our first um, memory pod event is on November the 3rd at Newquay Memorial Hall. So we're inviting all of you to come along and share any stories you may have of the Welsh coast. So um, the Inspiring Our Future part of the project is um, my remit and it's a cross-cutting theme throughout the project and we'll, we'll be providing training and opportunities for volunteers to become involved in marine research and conservation through active conservation efforts, data gathering surveys and citizen science projects as well as providing opportunities to, for volunteers to assist with our community engagement work. As it said on the screen, it's open to all, regardless of background or knowledge. Um, we have two of our volunteers on the screen. Uh, whilst the project is new, I've been managing um, volunteers at the Cardigan Bay Marine Wildlife Centre three years previous, and a lot of those volunteers are, are now assisting with the project. Gemma at the top is a marine biology graduate. She volunteers with us because she needs you know, that experience to, to make her way into the marine conservation field. And she's helping with our photo ID um, bottlenose dolphin research. And then we've got Andy at the bottom. So Andy is actually a former teacher. He's recently retired from the youth justice system. He's a really avid bird watcher. Um, and since volunteering with us, he's been really into his marine mammals as well. And he wants to help because he's so passionate, um, originally about birds, but now about mammals. And he just, you know, speaks to the public. He came to every single one of our road shows. So he toured the entire length and breadth of Wales this year, sleeping in his van so he could take his passion um, to people. So we're hoping to involve a, a lot of people like that in the project, whether their background is in conservation or not. 
We will be providing volunteer activities such as um, taster sessions, wildlife surveys, um, beach cleans and more, as well as in-depth training in data capture techniques, memory recording and community engagement. And this will help for those who aren't, don't have that background when we provide the training. Volunteers will also be encouraged to become involved in marine advocacy and the project team will provide resources such as template consultation responses and letters to decision makers for volunteers to use. As we've seen and mentioned with the issue of plastic, the more people that are raising their voices, the more people that are concerned means that governments, organisations, businesses are more likely to make change. We will also be creating a network of marine champions. These will be volunteers that are slightly further above some of the other volunteers they involve. They'll have uh, further training in things like health and safety, running events, and they will be um, organising um, and running surveys, engagement events in their local area. Um, there are four of us on the ground covering the whole of the Welsh coastline. So these marine champions will really help us to, to spread our work and um, ensure that we hit our targets. It's really important for us to inspire the future. Um, as I previously mentioned, there is very poor baseline data um, on um, the marine environment in Wales. By involving volunteers, we'll be doing data surveys, um, some of our own, for example, the Wildlife Trust Shore Search Programme. We'll also be contributing to other citizen science projects in order to gather that baseline data of the marine environment in Wales. Volunteers will also be inspired to take action, and therefore, as I said, more voices, the more chance of change. And whilst our project is involved, it focused on the marine environment, it also has a benefit for people in their community. Volunteering, and in, through volunteering, an individual can increase their skills and knowledge of particular interest and benefit to those who are currently seeking work. Volunteering is also a social activity and can have a really big impact on those who are lonely, especially in some of our smaller coastal communities. Spending time outdoors can also increase a volunteer's health and well-being and it will soon be the point where GPs will be referring people to volunteering as a way of benefiting their mental health and well-being. And hopefully many of our volunteers and marine champions will continue to take action after the project has ended, therefore continuing the sustainability of the project and helping us move towards living seas in Wales. Um, so it's tried to fit the whole project into a very short period of time. Um, so thank you for inviting us to talk. If you would like um, any more information, um, we're all online. We're at www.livingseas.wales. There's also an option on there for you to share some of your marine stories with us. Um, you can upload pictures and videos on there. And you know, if you're working near the coast, along the coastline, you're managing reserves and you'd like to run a collaborative marine themed, coastal themed event, you know, Bev would be more than happy to come along. And if you think you or your volunteers would like training in marine um, data collection techniques, then I'd be willing to run sessions with you. So we're really looking to collaborate and involve as many organisations as we can to make this step towards living seas in Wales. So thank you.